Help support the companies that support our community. So last week when we were on the road in the mobile shop, we were in Eastern Washington and Robin had posted some pictures and George Dale lived just up the road from it. So we stopped to visit with him at the rest stop for a little while and he gave me this antique bocce ball to turn and to give Robin a, a bottle of wine too. Thank you, George. So it's lignum vitam and I'm not sure the plugs on the end, whether they're ivory or bone, but it looks like an antique ball. We looked at some of them up online and, and there were some ones that were sig uh, similar to this. So I don't want to do anything with the end caps here. I wanted to save that and keep the integrity of it when I'm doing this. I'm gonna make a lidded box out of it. So what I'm gonna do is just put it in between centers with basically little, little cups and I'm going to use these to protect it and I'm just going to make a tenon down here and then I'll start turning it. So once I get that tenon on there then I can can shape it a little bit and hollow it out and make the lid. I'll have the lid down here. One of them is cupped out a little bit so it stands up on its own and this one here is round so I'm going to use this for the bottom of the box and that for the lid. So let me get this on the lathe and we'll get to turning it.
To hollow out the inside of the lid, I used the cold jaws to hold on to it. I was going to use vacuum chuck, but it didn't quite fit, and I don't know if it has enough pressure to hold on to it to hollow out the wood because it is so hard. So I just used the cold jaws. So this whole process of making this lidded box was a little different than I'd normally do. Normally, you can see the outside of it and shape it, and then you go in and hollow out the inside. But because it was... I wanted to keep the top and bottom. I just kind of had to, you know, imagine what it, what the outside looked like because I hollowed it out first. And as far as hollowing out the inside of the lid, normally this is done when it's still on the lathe, or you have a, a tenon on it and you can grab it in the in the chuck and do it. But the wood is super hard. You might have noticed in the very beginning of the video it looked like I made some cuts before I even started turning which is true. I tried a spindle gouge, bowl gouge, and I tried the regular uh, 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 carbide cutters, and it just was too hard. It was chipping out with the regular cutter, so I switched to the negative rake, and it cut it very nice. Um, it's almost like resin. It was It's super hard, and I think maybe a little bit brittle because it's so old, too, um, but the negative rake worked great. I used the, the mini hauler tools to clean out the inside of it and the in the top of the or the inside of the lid too um, but super fun project so as far as cleaning it out it just I kind of smoothed it out and the other thing is years ago I tried doctor's uh, walnut oil finish as a sanding lubricant so when I, years ago when I was doing with the paste wax and mineral oil well when I did, I got the wrong one. I got the one that had wax in it and it would gum up the sandpaper. So I just stopped using it and I moved on and found something else that worked better. But when we were up in Seattle, I got to talking to Mike and he goes, you grabbed the wrong bottle. <laughs> so I got a bottle of just the oil and it works so nice. I am going to switch and use this. It's a little bit more expensive than the Howard, but I don't uh, you don't hardly use any of it so I think in the long run it's going to work out better and it doesn't dry in the sandpaper. I use the same pieces of sandpaper to sand the entire box. Um, so and on a part of it I came, had to come back the next day and work on it. The sandpaper is still it's not dried in there and I just grabbed it and started using it again. The little plugs in it I thought they, you know, I wasn't quite sure how far down in they went, but they're they're pretty thin. So I just kind of cleaned it up just a little bit, and I didn't didn't cut into it very much at all. I just kind of ran the cutter across it, but um, and there was a hole drilled all the way through it, and I think that was put in there to release the air when they put the plugs in. I think these plugs are in there very tight, and I think it. That's why they do that is so there's a little no air pressure to pop them out. But very cool project. Again, George, thank you so much. Awesome, awesome piece of wood to turn. And I just love the fact that we were able to keep the, the plugs on the end of it and keep that integrity on it. I even, I didn't turn that first ring around the plug there um, because they have numbers that were stamped into it too. So I, I'll put some pictures up at the end here, but you can still see those numbers. So it's super cool on the top and the bottom. And I didn't, uh, I just sanded, sanded the little plugs. And I'm not sure again what those are. They, they might be ivory or bone, um, but I really like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this in the mail and send it back to you, George. So I hope you enjoy it. I really enjoyed turning it and it was a fun project. Um, a couple little things before I go, ran out of time. The Kodiak sharpening jig, I got that right before we left for the road trip and I didn't get a chance to put a video up on it so I will actually put one up in a couple of days on showing you how to use that thing. It's so simple, it takes all the guesswork out of sharpening. They're all presets on it so it's super cool. I'll get a full video up on that and show you everything it does and it's compatible with the Wolverine. So if you already have one, you can just a couple little attachment to it and you can simplify sharpening very quickly. All right, um, I believe that's it. We uh, are home for a few weeks and then we are headed to Oklahoma City and Dallas. So we're taking the mobile shop and we are headed back there. We've got some classes and demonstrations in Oklahoma City Woodcraft and then we're going to Dallas for the Dallas area wood turners and we're going to do a, a demo and some classes with them. All right, till next time, take care.